reason you're not getting to pain free PMS free consistent cycles right now, the reason you don't have those, the reason you have to search this and find this video is because of things of how hard you're working to keep yourself out of the out of that result to stop taking actions that encourage painful PMS ridden inconsistent menstrual cycles. I'm here for you. And what I do is in accordance with our mission at study plus free, which is to end period pain is I look for the questions you guys are asking. So I look ending period pain and I answer the question. And I also get to comment on what the world is telling you, the possibility that actually you, you could have pain-free, PMS-free, and consistent cycles. I am fighting a tidal wave, but I'm gonna keep paddling because eventually more people are gonna paddle with me and our rafts are going to connect. And eventually our rafts will be so big that we can surf the wave instead of being destroyed by it. That tidal wave is wrong information. So let's get into it. The question, ending period pain, how do I end period pain? And the question that came underneath that in the Google search, this one I really loved. The questions were, are cramps worse at the beginning or end of period? What are the symptoms of last day of period? But this is the one that I really loved. How do you stop period cramps? Thank you. I thought for the longest time that people only wanted to figure out how to ease their period cramps because they thought that was the only possible solution. But people actually do want to believe that there's a way to stop period cramps. That's what we do. That is what we do. So click the button to see what the internet at large, to see what the most popular answer to the question, how do you stop period cramps to see what it was? And the answer was that they reframed the question. That question is not able to be answered by the general body of knowledge, by the Google. So they reframed the question so that they could give an answer to a question. They reframed the question to say, to say how do you, no, the question was, how do you stop period cramps? They reframed it to say, how can you ease period pain? Ease. When you have to ease something, it means you must go through it. But we're going to tell you how to do it with the greatest amount of comfort. They give you five tips. Number one, have a warm bath or shower. Number two, use a heat pad or hot water bottle wrapped in a tea towel on your tummy. Number three, try massaging your tummy and back. Number four, try some gentle exercises like yoga, swimming, walking, or cycling. Number five, use painkillers like paracetamol or ibuprofen. For my US audience, paracetamol is something they use in Europe. I've never heard of it, um, but we know I'd be perfect. Uh, and this is from the National Health Service of the UK. Can you imagine what a slap in the face it is to want to believe that there is a way to stop your body from terrorizing you for five to 10 days every month, only to be told that no, there is no way out. There is only a way to make your suffering a little more comfortable, suffering and comfort. I have a great article about this um, with this amazing story of the four rich men and the prisoners. Okay, I'm going to tell you the story really quickly, but it's on another post as well. Okay, here's the story as told by Wayne Dyer, who heard it from somebody else. And this is about suffering and comfort. So there's a village, the village gets captured by the by enemies. And all of the soldiers who fought to defend their village, they are kept in a prison in the middle of the village. And so one very wealthy member of the village says, um, I am going to give all of my food, all of my crops, I'm going to give all of my crops to the prisoners so that they can eat well. And another wealthy member of the village says, I'm going to redirect all of the clean water from my reservoir. I'm going to redirect it to the prison so that the prisoners can have uh, clean water in their captivity. Another prisoner says, I'm going to take, I mean, another wealthy member of the village says, I'm going to take all of my money and I'm going to donate it to prisoners so that they can have the best of everything besides good water and food so they can have comfort in the prison. And then one member of the village, I don't know if that person was wealthy or not, steals out in the middle of the night grabs the key to the prison, unlocks the door, and frees the prisoners. That's me, the period empress. And all of the money that goes to women's health and all the charities that go to, um, all the charities that are dedicated to research and figuring out a solution and um, figuring out better ways to ease people's pain. All of that are the people who are trying to figure out, people who are raising money for surgery so that people can get their endometrial growths removed. Not intentionally are they massaging, encouraging the message that we must learn to suffer in comfort. This language is radical. I get that. But I spent 20 years, every cycle, hoping that someone figure out a way to stop the pain. And even today, after I have figured out a way that it causes no risk, requires no supplements, requires no special diet, requires no hormone therapy or gut therapy or functional health doctors or all of this time and money wasted in a waiting room, told eventually that you have to look at hysterectomy because there's nothing else we can do. 
already went through that. My solution worked and it saved my uterus. It saved my ability to have kids. It saved my mental health so that I didn't have to go on psychotropic medications for PMDD. We should not suffer because our body is screaming at us to allow it to function as it was created to function. That's gotta stop. Okay, so now let's get to the solution. These are all great ideas. I did the five points that you just heard from the NHS UK. I did those. I lived walking around with my heating pads, stuck in my pants, taking copious amounts of ibuprofen, sobbing as I had to figure out, do I take this ibuprofen and experience pain relief for 30 minutes, followed by vomiting, or do I not take the ibuprofen so that I can avoid the vomiting but still be in this debilitating pain that's making me cry and suffer anyway? That's what I lived with while in the doghouse with my family because I had been utterly brutal in some way or other during my PMS, during my PMS like takeovers. It truly is a syndrome, it really takes over you. I don't have any of that now. I don't have any cramps. And it's not because my body decided to just stop one day. It's because of three things that I did. These are three ways to start. I recommend that you check out the Fierce Gentleness Collective because I just made a wonderland. I made my dream world. I made my dream world that not only shifts you to pain-free PMS re-regulating cycles, but passively encourages you to stay because there's this thing that happens right before we get to the other side of, sh of change and success darkest before the dawn, where we suddenly realize that we're about to abandon a way that we've been living for so long and the fear of abandoning that way, that pain, that prison. This is the prisoner having the key to the, the prison cell opened and, and turning back and putting themselves back in the jail. We all face that moment. And what I did when I created the Wonderland was I put in enough tools that you will have enough outside support to get you to the other side because you will want to turn back only because familiarity is, is a false sense of security and that could keep you there. I have had clients who were seeing themselves progress and, and overcome majorly life um, changing problems because of their menstrual issues. And I've seen them stop the work altogether because it threatened their identity. What would they have if they were no longer dealing with their period problems? Gay Hendrix talks about it. I love working with Gay Hendrix. The Hendrix Institute has been a major supporter of me and of my work. And Gay Hendrix talks about it in The Big Leap, which I try to get everybody and their mother to read. Um, and it's just called upper limiting. But let me give you the three tips because that's why you're here. Number one, the first way to stop menstrual cramps is to uh, consider that your input is your output. Your income is your outcome. When you are subjecting yourself to things that make you feel less than, shameful, not good enough, bad, dumb, when you do, when you expose yourself to that kind of, of treatment, and it's really easy to do and we don't do it purposefully, a lot of times we do it um, with the best of intentions. It's just that we are told uh, simply because we were born with a uterus that we are automatically in this world with a major disability. Okay. So people will often say, you know, that term, you're a credit to your race. A lot of times, uh, it's a pejorative, it's a pejorative term. Um, despite being a woman, I da, 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 da. there's a lot of different ways that we say that becoming aware of all the ways that you consume shame, because ultimately it comes to shame, becoming aware of those and stopping that will stop that negative income, which will affect your outcome. And I did a whole white paper on this sponsored by the Hendrix Institute that literally explains the science behind stopping period cramps, especially. So check it out because that, that answers the question. But um, when you only allow good income, the pain will stop. Number two, listen to your intuition. We have four bodies that make up the holistic being, the intuitive body, the physical body, the emotional body from the left and the mental body from the right. Listening to your intuition is a fantastic way to stop suppressing your inner urges, your inner knowings. Your inner knowings are sponsored by your intuition. The more you listen to your intuitive body, which is highly, highly, highly responsive in contrast to your physical body, which is simply a 3D printer for these three non-physical bodies that I just described. When you listen to those, you're affecting the programming that your body prints out. So instead of manipulating the printer after the paper is printed and seeing a typo and trying to, I don't know, cut and splice with, a, with, with scissors and glue the letters and trying to re uh, put them, replace them in the right order. If you just like change the programming, which is this business up here, then your body will not print errors. Your body will not produce cramps because it didn't get the input to make them. Yeah. The third thing you can do is stop trying to get it right. You have to acknowledge that our hormonal cycle runs on a 28 day schedule, roughly 28 days. In contrast to people born without a uterus, their hormonal cycle runs on a 24 hour schedule. They have access to a form of consistency that really works in this world as it is because ah, they curated this world. They were the first ones out of the cave, not us. We stayed in the cave to the benefit of our species. In my paper, there's a great section about how because we were so tuned into our uh, being as the 
drinkers, as beers rather than doers, uh, we actually saved our species. The Neanderthals died out because they were not attuned to this aspect of ourselves. It is an unfair advantage that we have a 28 day cycle, despite what many experts might say. And the unfair advantage is that we're allowed to show up at full energy as four different amazing experts on our lives every cycle, every full 28 to 29 day cycle. That is amazingly awesome. It's just not awesome when we think we're supposed to show up the same way every day, like our friends who are born without a uterus, who do it with no effort. We are wasting a lot of effort trying to be something that we're not. I love the metaphor. I love the metaphor of the turtle versus the, the tortoise and the hare. I love that because in the tortoise and the hare, the tortoise does not try to be the hare to win the race. The tortoise doubles down on its being. We have that opportunity. And when we double down on who we are, we allow a useful impact that is gorgeous, brilliant, blissful. And the more that we're living in that way, that positive feedback 